Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Brown & Brown Inc, ticker symbol BRO, bro. We're looking at Brown & Brown today because they're a dividend aristocrat. So dividend aristocrats are members of the S&P 500 who have consecutively increased their dividend payouts for each of the past 25 years. In the case of Brown & Brown, they've consecutively increased their dividends for each of the past 28 years. Right now, they're paying out a 0.7% dividend yield. Currently, their stock is trading for $55.41 per share, and their stock price is down 16% over the past year. Over the last five years, it's a totally different story for Brown & Brown. They're compounding at a rate of 16.5% annually. Over 10 years, they're compounding at a rate of 16% annually. However, going back prior to the global financial crisis, Brown & Brown is compounding at a rate of about 10% annually. Keep in mind that their average dividend yield would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So Brown & Brown is trading just a couple of dollars over their 52-week low. They're down about $20 from their 52-week high, and they're a decent-sized business. They have about a $15.7 billion market cap. For additional background about the business, Brown & Brown Inc. is an insurance agent and broker that offers insurance products and services, primarily in the areas of property, casualty, and employee benefits, by connecting customers with insurance companies. It earns its revenue via commissions from insurance companies and direct fees from customers, and it generally has no underwriting risk exposure. More than half of its revenue is from its retail segment, which provides a broad range of insurance products and services to entities and individuals. Roughly a fourth of revenue is from their national program segment, which provides, among other things, professional liability coverage for professionals. The company operates primarily in the United States with its highest exposure in Florida. Brown & Brown was founded in 1939 and is headquartered in Daytona Beach, Florida. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Brown & Brown based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. And the second is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Brown & Brown has tended to earn pretty stable returns on capital over this period. They've just been above 10% for most of these years in the low double digits. Over their last 12 months, they've earned about a 10% return on capital and averaged out over this period. Brown & Brown is earning about an 11% return on capital. So while that is slightly above that of a typical business, that's just a few percentage points below that 14% benchmark we're ideally looking for. And so while it is above average, this is an X to start things off for Brown & Brown. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time, Brown & Brown has grown their revenues by about 83%. So strong revenue growth here. They've also increased their earnings by about 57%, and their free cash flows are up more than double. This is strong growth across the board here for Brown and & Brown, and this is our first check today coming in on metric number two. It's great to see that of all of these numbers, their free cash flows were up the most because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business, and a business can use its free cash flows to buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, reinvest back into the business, or pay dividends. Ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is going to be worth. Great to see such strong growth here. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Brown & Brown on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. We learned in the previous metric that their earnings are up by more than 57% over this period. However, earnings are just the numerator in this earnings per share equation. So we also want to look at their shares outstanding. In the case of Brown & Brown, they pretty much kept their shares outstanding flat over this period. With their earnings being up and their shares outstanding being pretty much flat, their earnings per share over this time period are going to be up. This is another check here on metric number three. And so far we have two checks and one X. Metric number four is gonna be very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, we learned that their free cash flows have more than doubled over this time frame, and with their shares outstanding flat, this is strong free cash flow per share growth here for Brown & Brown. This is our third check in a row, and through our first four metrics, again, we have three checks and one X. Then next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. 
So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that they produced over the last five years. So Brown & Brown ended 2021 with about $1.4 billion worth of net debt. Currently, they've increased this over the last year or so, and they have about $3.8 billion worth of net debt. They've added on some long-term debt that's increased this amount. However, over the last five years, Brown & Brown has only produced about $3.1 billion worth of free cash flow. So it looks like relative to the business's abilities to produce free cash flows, they're using slightly more debt in their business than their free cash flows would be able to support historically. However, it is worth being aware that over their last 12 months, they've earned about $872 million worth of free cash flow, and they had just shy of $900 million worth of free cash flow in 2021. So both of these last couple of years of free cash flows have been well above where they've been at historically. And if these free cash flows could be extrapolated into the future, then it looks like Brown & Brown would be able to support their net debt position with their current free cash flows. So to determine whether or not that's the case is just going to require more work to dig in and learn more about this business in more depth. This is an X here on metric number five, and through our first five metrics, we have three checks and two Xs for Brown and Brown. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us another reason to be interested in the business. So we're using their total enterprise value because it's going to take into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a picture of the economic reality of the business that's more similar to as if Brown & Brown were a private company. So right now, Brown & Brown has about a $19.5 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that in the last five years, they've earned about $3.1 billion of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, they're earning about $620 million worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $620 million of their average free cash flow by their $19.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 3.2%. So that's below that 5% risk premium we're ideally looking for. And that's slightly below the yield of the 10-year treasury right now as well. So on an average basis, this is an X here on metric number six. Again, as we pointed out in our last metric, over their last 12 months, they have earned more free cash flow than what they've been at historically. So Brown & Brown has earned $872 million worth of free cash flow in their last 12 months. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $872 million of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $19.5 billion total enterprise value, that gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 4.5%. So that would be above the yield of the 10-year treasury. However, again, that's slightly below that 5% risk premium we're ideally looking for. So on both a current and an average basis, this is an X here for metric number six. But just Just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to throw this business out in its entirety. This is just one of our six metrics, and this is not financial advice. This analysis is meant to be taken in holistically, and even though these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. Then here we're looking at Brown & Brown's dividend profile. So again, as mentioned, Brown & Brown is a dividend aristocrat of 28 years. Right now, they're paying out a modest dividend yield of 0.7%. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing either dividend yield or dividend track record. So it's important to look at the underlying fundamentals of a business and to determine whether or not their dividends are well supported by either their earnings or their free cash flows, depending on the type of business. For Brown & Brown, we want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. And it seems like they were easily able to support this in all five of these previous fiscal years. They've increased their dividend payouts per share, and at the same time, they've increased their free cash flows per share in all five of these years. Currently, Brown & Brown is paying out less than a 20% dividend payout ratio. It looks like the company's dividends are in a very healthy spot going forward, and that based off their abilities to produce free cash flows, it's likely the business would be able to sustain this dividend growth for a decent while to come. Even though this is a snapshot of the past five years and past performance is no guarantee for the future, it would seem like if they're able to continue this trend going forward, that their dividends would be in very healthy shape. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Brown & Brown, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with their current free cash flows and using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown their free cash flows dating back all the way till 1990 to give us a projected baseline estimate for Brown and Brown going forward over the next 20 years. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these are potentially accurate and applicable going forward for the business. So using a growth stage over the next 10 years where they grow their free cash flows at a rate of about 11.5% annually, then assuming a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that where these free cash flows grow at a rate of 9.5% annually, if we add in their tangible 
of book value and we were seeking a potential 10% rate of return for the business, then it looks like the company is right around fairly valued with our estimate of their fair value being about 30 cents above what their current stock price is. So please keep in mind a couple of caveats here. One is that this discount rate would be including their dividend yield, which is modest, although we would not be doubly counting their dividends here. And then two, there are a number of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate going forward for the business. So please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in summary, Brown and Brown checks the box on three out of six of our metrics. They're earning average returns on capital that are slightly above that of a typical business, but they're coming in at around 11%, which is below that 14% benchmark we're ideally looking for. Then the business has strongly grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows over the last five years while they've kept their shares outstanding pretty much flat. So they've had strong per share growth as well over this time on the back of their business growing. Recently, they've employed more long-term debt in their business. And while this isn't supported based off of their average free cash flows historically, this would be supported based off of their current free cash flows. However, at the same time, on both an average and a current basis of using their free cash flows compared to their enterprise value yield and comparing that to the yield of the 10-year treasury, it does not look like Brown & Brown is giving us that potential adequate risk premium that we'd ideally be seeking. Looking at their dividend profile, again, Brown & Brown is a dividend aristocrat of 28 years and they have a modest 0.7% dividend payout. So while that is below the yield of an S&P 500 ETF, it looks like their dividend payouts are in very solid shape and they're very healthily supported by their free cash flows in all five of the previous fiscal years. They've grown their free cash flows per share in each of these five years and they've also grown their dividend payouts, maintaining a very modest dividend payout ratio that's below 25% of their free cash flows. And then finally performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Brown and Brown. If you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, then it looks like from today's valuations, you could reasonably expect about a 10% rate of return going forward for Brown and Brown, which would be right about in line with what they've done over the past nearly two decades or so. Again, there are reasons that as a company gets bigger, it could potentially slow down. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding of Brown & Brown to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about the business. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can take your reading experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct your future research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the essence of that business and understand what's important and what's not important and what matters and what doesn't matter for that business going forward. So through your deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Brown and & Brown, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the business will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Brown & Brown Inc., ticker symbol BRO, bro. Again, we looked at the business as a continuation of looking at dividend aristocrats, so I'm happy to make an analysis of the company. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Brown and Brown with me and have a great day.